I wanted to do with this chicken tractor before I put the tarp on was show you some of the things that um, now that it's all fresh in my mind, I've been spending the last few weeks working on these after work, after the kids go to bed, been jotting down some notes, been looking into some improvements uh, based on what I um, experienced with last year's chicken tractor here. So what I want to go over today is how we've built this one. I want to give you some tips that I found while I was building, uh, some things about the plans which are wrong, which may trip you up, and then some additions and some improvements that I've made that we're going to try out this year. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is tools that it takes to build this chicken tractor. There's a list in the book uh, of things that you'll need, and all of those things are necessary. Uh, but I just want to talk a little bit about some things that he suggests that I would highly recommend that you do. Anyway, the first thing is a narrow crown stapler. The reason why I suggest this is that it's used to put on all the hardware cloth and all the chicken wire. And you need to probably put two or three thousand staples in this thing to get it completely sealed up and predator proof. Now, <laughs> I don't know about you, but it, using a hand stapler uh, was terrible when I did the previous chicken tractor. And this baby on Amazon is $25. You go and you buy just a regular hand stapler with the T50, you're going to pay half of that to do it by hand, or you can pay 25 bucks and get this, and it's literally bang, 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 and it works awesome. It uses these. These are narrow crown staples, and I would suggest getting the three-quarter inch staples. Second thing I would suggest is get yourself a really nice drill. If you can't get a really nice drill, then this is going to be a long project for you because you're going to be drilling plenty of pilot holes, you're going to drill through wood, you're going to drill uh, big screws and little screws, you're going to drill through metal conduit as well, uh, pilot holes, and I would suggest you get yourself a really nice drill. If you can get a nice drill and one of these, which is an impact driver, uh, you can use this and set um, different torques on it, and what it'll do is it'll, uh, you're, you're almost guaranteed to never strip a screw the last thing I would suggest is a cordless um, uh, circular saw, which this is not mine. My father-in-law, thank you, Terry, uh, left this at my house and I used it. Now, the reason why this was a game changer for this project is because of the half lap joints that you have to make to build the frame. That takes probably an hour and a half or more just to make all of those joints, just to cut them, okay? And when you're using, you, you definitely cannot do that by hand. You have to have a tool to do that. Otherwise, this will take literally forever. This is probably the best you can get out of what you're looking for. Uh, you know, just consumer tools is to have a portable battery operated uh, one of these because when you're cutting those, you can go through and make your cuts, but then you can also move the saw back and forth in between uh, the joints after you've cleared everything out of the joint, and then that is a lot less time that is required to chisel. The last thing I'll say is to buy really nice tools. I used to always buy junk tools, and it takes forever because what you pay for in nice tools, uh, if you don't pay for that, you'll pay for it with your time. I, I am actually getting too old for that, I think. I'm young-ish, but I'm getting too old for that already. So this is the book. I recommend you get it. It's on Amazon. It's $15. And I recommend that you get it because you'll be supporting Siskovich, who is a great author. This is a great book, second edition. He does great work. Check out his YouTube channel. There's tons more information about raising pastured poultry. There's actually a lot of, a lot of information in here that is not about building a chicken tractor that is worth $15 just for that without the plans. That being said, there are a few things in here that I um, found were difficult for me, and I'm going to go over those with you. I'm not going to go through how to build the whole thing, because that wouldn't be fair to John. He should make money on this. I shouldn't be uh, showing you how to do it for free. All right, so let's start on the front of the chicken tractor. 
First thing that I point out that I did a little bit differently is that I used an eye screw here, uh, which is going to be used for attaching the tow rope. Now, John Siskovich in his book has you just uh, drill a hole here and then tie the rope through. Um, I didn't like that. What I wanted to do was to be able to take the rope off, and so I have these spring links here, which make it easy for the rope to be taken off because for different uses of the chicken tractor, sometimes I don't really want the rope on there. Okay, let's talk about the door. Now, the door is the very last thing that you do when you build this chicken tractor. The plans will say to put the door on and then you'll go on and move on to the rest of it. And that's not right, don't do that. Do the door last, do the door last, do the door last. The reason why is that every single thing that you attach to this chicken tractor is going to make this frame bend or curve a little bit. And so if you build that door, it's gonna be pushing against and these door pieces are going to rub against each other and you're gonna say, hey, I made that door, it worked great, and now it doesn't. And the same thing is gonna happen when you're in the field. The chicken tractor is never gonna sit on level ground. You need to make sure that the door fits very well when it's level, and then also when you're building it. You need to make sure that there's plenty of space between the door and the frame. You can see right now there's only about an eighth inch on each side uh, here and here. And the reason why is because this is treated wood, and so it's swollen is actually frozen when I bought it. And as it dries out, it's gonna shrink. So if you put about an eighth inch or so on the sides, by the time that it all um, shrinks down, and I'll show you on last year's chicken tractor, you can see how big of a width difference there is here. I can fit my whole pinky in it. So it's getting close to a half an inch, all right? Now that means that you may have to take your locks, maybe even the hinges and you're gonna to have to take them off and move them. You can see I already had to take this one off and move it because I messed it up. So that is the moral of the story of the door is do it last, last, last. Okay, the next thing on the door is you'll see in the book these diagonal braces right here and there's two at the bottom as well. And you'll see there are braces on the back of the frame of the door. John Siskovich does not have those in his book at all as cuts. So make sure that you save the scrap wood that is used um, for uh, all of the other pieces of the tractor. If you save that scrap wood, then you should have enough to do uh, these supports. And then I'll go back and say, <laughs> you see these screw holes here? That was me readjusting the door after I built it and had it out on, and out, <laughs> basically out on pasture and it was too tight. I took the door apart, I readjusted it. Okay, so I always do the door last. Do it last, last, last. Okay, so last thing on the door is when you're installing the door, buy some cheap uh, pine wood shims and install the door first without the lock, without the hinges, just press it into the frame and then put these, put these um, pine pieces in here. That will give you your 1 8 inch or so um, clearance between all of the door posts. When you get those hinges in, you do two on top, you do two on the bottom, on the on uh, top and bottom of the sides, as well as the top and bottom of the frame. Put those in, you can get the whole door actually stuck in the frame, and then come along with your hinges, mark the locations uh, of the screws, and then drill them in. When you're all done, pull the shims out, some of them will just fall out. That's actually a good thing. The door will be seated in there with a nice eighth inch around the entire thing. Okay, let's look at the back of the door frame uh, real quick. One thing that I did here is uh, I like having this rope up off of the ground. It's very quick to be able to take it and clip it back in. Um, it's not that much more time to do that on your daily move, but it is nice to have the rope off the ground because things do get messy out in the pasture. So just take your springs and attach them on there for when you're moving the tractor. So I saved the best for last, the best tip I think for the front of the chicken tractor. And that is that the dimensions of a few of the pieces in the book, <laughs> I don't think are right. Um, I messed it up on the previous chicken tractor, which I'll show you right now. This is the side of the frame. And if you go down to the end here, you'll see that there's a half lap joint that's been cut, but the frame 
is too short. It doesn't go all the way down. Instead, what you have is um, piece K, which is supposed to be 60 inches, and I wrote down on here, I cut it to 64 inches. So that's 64 inches from the joint, and if you do that, it goes all the way down. This is the 2x4 with the half lap joint, and this is the 1x4. So this is the 2x4, and then this is part um, I that goes all the way down to the ground and fits right in that joint like I expect like I expect it should. The other part is part I. Now this is the side jam of the door. I'm sorry, it's not the jam. This is just the side of the door. So that's part I. In the book, I can't remember what it says, but right now I have it marked as 53 and a half inches. That's the inner dimension of the jam when keep saying jam, but it's actually the door. This is part J up here, there's upside down J, and here's I, here's the joint right here. So again, part J goes over the top and then I butts up against it, and this should be 53 and a half inches. That gives you a door that goes all the way down to where it needs to be, and then also part of the frame that goes all the way down to the base of the tractor. Now cutting I, and K a little bit longer means that you'll have to buy an extra piece of 1x4. You should probably buy a couple extra pieces anyway if this is the first time you're building it because if you mess up, you know, for me it's an hour to go get another one piece of wood. So the last thing before we leave the front here is that you can see that the wood that I have is not cedar, even though it kind of looks like that. It, it doesn't have that green look of green treated stuff. It's actually ground contact treated wood. Okay, when you go to get your stuff, ask for the ground contact stuff. It's a little bit more expensive. It's a lot less than cedar, and it's a lot more than just regular SPF untreated, you know, spruce pine fir uh, dimensional lumber. Get the ground contact stuff because when I went there, I found that green treated was not rated for being on the ground. Okay, let's move on to the... Where are you going? Let's move on to the sides of the chicken tractor. Okay, so the first thing to point out is the conduit when it comes into the railing on the sides, okay? You have four pieces of EMT conduit that's gonna come in. And let me show you what it looks like, how it's to be done in the book. In the book, you have the conduit come out and you drill holes through the conduit into the side of the chicken tractor and you've bent the pipe and it comes down and it sits next to the rail. Now, that requires you building a jig to bend this pipe. And it also requires that you uh, take this conduit, and if you haven't bent it correctly, you have to hold it against here while you are drilling that screw in there. The second thing that's annoying about it is that you have to get chicken wire around it, okay? And that really makes it difficult because you have, uh, you know, you have to somehow get a way to get it to stay here, and every little piece of chicken wire that sticks out is going to rip your tarp. What I found that was better, I was just thinking while I was building it, instead of putting those <clears throat> on the inside, let's look at this one, it might be a little easier to see. Instead of putting those on the outside, what I did was I drilled a hole. You can see the conduit is going directly into the two by four. Take a one inch spade bit and you drill directly down and then the conduit just shoves right into it. At that point, it's stuck there and you don't need to use another hand to be able to drill the pilot hole for the screw and then drill the screw in there. It also now makes it really simple to come over and get this chicken wire on here and get it over and get it stapled in without having to go around another piece. The second thing about the sides that is different is that I've added an extra board right here. This right here is the frame that you'll build and here this is an extra board and sometimes it might be a little easier to see around the front. What this board does is it makes it really simple to put the hardware cloth around when you're going to do that step after the frame is built. You can see here, the hardware cloth comes in, you can just cut it and staple it. When you go to this side, you just bring it over, you cut it, and you staple it, and you're all done. No wrapping around, no trying to fold it. If you've ever worked with hardware cloth, you know it's pretty finicky. It's not as bad as chicken wire, but it's a lot stiffer, so it can be more difficult. So the last thing, about the sides is 
John Siskovich does not put chicken wire in between the two middle sections. He just puts one on the front section and puts one on the back section. And I don't know about you, but if you're going to go to this much trouble for <laughs> raising chickens and putting them out there with predators, there's no way I'm going to leave that middle section open. And there's no way that a tarp is going to be enough. Here's the deal. The reason why you should do this is that if you buy a 50-foot roll of chicken wire, which is what I had to buy, you already have extra. You don't need to go buy more. And it's probably the easiest piece to do, much easier than the piece on the back and the piece on the front, or the pieces that actually are facing the front and the back. So just go ahead and do it. It's super easy. It'll give you the peace of mind that you'll have a fully enclosed chicken tractor. So I made one enemy while building this chicken tractor. This pipe bender. We do not get along. I'm really bad at bending conduit. John does a really good job in the book of explaining how to do it, but I just, it just didn't go well. I tried to minimize this as much as I could. When you have a, the, the regular build of the chicken tractor, you bend the conduit in three places. You bend it at the base of the side, at the crest, and then you bend it on the second side. What I did was spent a couple extra dollars, and I did the bend on the side, and then I cut the middle, okay? By cutting the middle, you reduce the <laughs> chances of screwing that up royally, because if you screw that up, you have to throw the whole piece away, okay? If you screw up the sides where it goes into the, into the frame along the base, then you can cut that piece off and you still have some extra room to um, salvage it because you're gonna cut the conduit in half anyway. So what you do when you cut the conduit in half and make two pieces out of it is that you use one of these, okay? You can see that there, it has two screws, one here and another one on the other side. You put the conduit in, then you screw this down and it clamps it in. The other cool part about it is that the top has two screws and when you go to do the runner across the top, you just put a clamp on there and it holds the runner right in. In my opinion, and in my experience so far, this is a lot sturdier and really wasn't that much more uh, expensive considering the fact that I ruined two pieces of conduit. Now for the back, nothing much special going on here. We still have the addition of a board on each side, right here, and another one on this side just to make stapling the hardware cloth in a lot easier to have an extra piece. The one thing that I did add that I found from my time in the field is that you have your wheels that go on your tractor, and John Siskovich has some really good advice. You just buy one set of wheels, right? Because you're only moving one at a time, you only really need one set of wheels. The thing that I struggled with is finding the wheels, and also the fact that they got really gross <laughs> just being on the ground. Uh, and they also, if it rained, they're full of water, and then you had gross, watered-down, poopy water stuff that's on there. So what I did is I took one of the screws that holds, it's the same thing that's used as the axles, I did that by just putting another one of those in the back of the chicken tractor, and that gives you a place to store these when you're not, gives you a place to store those when you're not using them, that's kind of out of the way, and keeps them up off the ground. So that is everything with the chicken tractor that I've done, changed, and some pain that I went through that hopefully you won't have to go through. Now there's one more thing that I did on this chicken tractor, which is an experiment for this year, and it came out of uh, some troubles that I had um, with the bucket that John Siskovich says to use um, that uh, has the water nipples in the back, of, or on the bottom of it. Mounting that bucket from the ceiling I really didn't like, because I didn't want to have to be in the chicken tractor any more than I had to. If there's anything I've learned from other farmers is that broilers, the number one thing, Darby Simpson talks about this, the number one thing that causes them not to put on weight is stress. So I don't want to be in the chicken tractor any more than I have to. The feeder will do that. Otherwise, I want to use the, those chicken water nipples, but I want to be able to fill up the chicken water 
uh, from the outside. And that wasn't going to happen when you're mounting the five gallon bucket from the top of the chicken tractor. Usually the, they show you to uh, put it on a, on a rope or a string and then hang it from the top like you do the feeder. I found that when the birds were getting really big those last week or two, there was just too much space that was being taken up by feeders and by, um, by the water bucket. So the problems most people have with these chicken nipple waters is with pressure. They take a static pressure, and what that means is that between one and five pounds per square inch is how much they can take. If you do more than that, it'll just squeeze and just shoot right out the bottom. You do less than that, when the chicken hits it, there really isn't enough. They'll, they'll hit it, and maybe a drop of water will come out, but not necessarily every time, and so they don't get it that, you know, this is where they get water. Uh, and, and then they don't use it. The sweet spot is between 1 and 5 PSI. That means that you can't use them uh, with your hose that hooks up to your city water or your well. That's usually 15 PSI or more. So you could go the route where you spend 30 or $40 on a regulator and a filtration system coming off of your city water and stuff like that. But gravity is a lot easier and it's always there and it's free. Gravity actually will give you 0.43 PSI per foot. Okay, so that means that your bucket, when it's full, it probably has two to two and a half feet of water maximum, and that's just enough to make sure that the, enough comes out for the chickens, okay? So that's like getting close to one PSI. What I thought of and what I wanted to try with this was to create a water system for the chicken tractor that doesn't take up a ton of space, it doesn't add a lot of weight, relatively cheap and easy to build, and can use these. So what I ended up doing, and you can see here, is I created a PVC pipe, and this is basically a snorkel which is used as the inlet. So you shove a water hose, uh, your, your garden hose in there. And it goes in here, and there's a line that runs down the length of the tractor up at the ceiling. And then there's various lines that run down the sides and this is all one inch PVC pipe. And then they also run around, uh, run around the base. So what that does is it gives us about four feet of height and it gives about three gallons of water capacity for the tractor. And as you can see, it hasn't taken up any room. So what this system basically does is add three gallons of water to your watering capacity, allows you to fill the tractor without having to go inside of it. And then I found on Amazon, they actually have PVC that's clear. I guess it's for making furniture or something like that. But you can use this as a little gas gauge so you can visibly see from the chicken tractor, from, excuse me, from outside the chicken tractor to see how much water is left in it. And I found here that basically, if it's down to about here, there's a gallon left of water in there. If it's up here, there's about two gallons of water in it. If you can't see, there's more than two gallons of water. Could have spent more money on clear PVC, but I don't want a lot of sunlight getting in there and causing algae to grow. I really just need a visual indication of, of how much is in there so I know if it has to be filled. So we're inside the chicken tractor in the back. Here's our gauge. Here's the base that goes out to the rest of the tractor. And this is kind of the exciting part where we get to see how the watering system works. So what I have here is just half inch PVC and then here are some tees that have a thread in them that fits the chicken nipple waters. You can just screw those in, they don't require any tape or anything like that. There's a little gasket uh, inside, so you screw that in, just get it hand tight and it's good to go, that's where it is. So what I have here is this wand basically, or manifold, and it holds five waters. On the other side of this wand is a hose barb, a hose clamp, and then half inch inner diameter polyvinyl tubing. What that allows you to do is take this manifold, connect it to tubing that's flexible, um, and then put another hose barb on the end. I'll show you a little bit. There's the hose barb. Fits in there, has a hose clamp around it. And what we can do with that is we can take that and we uh, can take this threaded T here, and then screw this in. Now we have the chicken tractor um, all the way uh, connected to the manifold 
and is the beginning of our watering system. The next part of the watering system is we're reusing these two uh, shelves that we created that we'll use for nesting boxes someday. And then we have what are called suspensilator, suspendilator, something like that. They're basically hose clamps and they're meant for three, eighth, three quarter inch pipe, but this is half inch pipe. And what that allows us to do is to use them to take them and just bend them off and then we can stick the manifold in there. And it doesn't hold them too tight and it's easy just to take them out when you want to take them out. And I have five different stations here where those are put in. And the reason we do that is because the chickens grow as they're in here. If you're using broilers, you have baby chicks that, you know, one day old or this big. So the nipple water height is set to be three inches at that point. And as they get older, you can come in here and move them up to whatever tier uh, is necessary as they grow higher. That's why we use this piece of tubing down here and didn't connect it with PVC pipe up to uh, the supply is because we want to be able to move it up and down. If we have layers in here and they're full size, we're probably never going to move it. But when broilers are in here and they're just constantly growing, you're going to have to move that every once in a while as the chickens grow. To attach the manifold, what we have here again is this T, and I've taken the cap off. And here you can buy these caps, you know, they're 30 cents or something like that. That allows you to plug this when you're not using it. You'll notice I have the exact same apparatus on the outside, for instance, if you wanted to put a water on the outside of your tractor too, if you let them free range, they can have water whether they're inside or outside. You can basically build two of these manifolds, one for the inside, one for the outside. They work, they're really great because essentially it's a closed system and you're gonna get far fewer you know, gunk inside of your chicken nipple waterers, these things can clog up pretty easily if they're in the bucket. So this is how the whole system looks when it is all set up and ready for uh, the chickens. And now let's fill it up and I can show you how it works. Okay, so now we're ready to try it out. Um, obviously there's a huge mess here. I spilled a bunch of water. You can see that we have enough pressure with it. It's probably a little bit on the high side when the tractor's full. When the chicken hits it, they're gonna get a whole lot of water. Once you get that air out of the line, um, you should be pretty good. This also gives you a visual indicator from outside the chicken tractor about whether there's water that's in the uh, that's you know, coming out here. You can see the water moving in the line there. <clears throat> that gives you another indication without exposing too much uh, of the water to sunlight. Okay, so that is my tips, tricks, list of things I did wrong, plus modifications, sweet mods that were made to the John Siskovitz chicken tractor. Um, I should also say that this work right now is being funded by a grant from the Minnesota Department of Agriculture. It's a sustainable agriculture demonstration grant. Uh, and what that grant is for this year is for 2018 and 2019 season. I built two of these chicken tractors and one of them will have the birds in all the time. And another one will put some electric fence around that and then let the birds be in a more free range, what's called a day range system. What we're gonna do is these birds versus the day range birds, we will track expenses, how much time it takes to, uh, to take care of them, and even bring them in some, for some nutritional tests to see if there's any difference in the quality uh, or nutritional value of the meat based on a day ranging system versus full-time um, tractor confinement. Uh, so this work and these chicken tractors were brought to you by that Minnesota Department of Agriculture sustainable agriculture demonstration grant. If you want to see how that experiment goes over 2018 and 2019 season, feel free to like this video and subscribe to it because as a part of the grant, I signed up to make a bunch of YouTube videos showing the progress, including the build of this chicken tractor. So thanks a lot.